All right, there's our next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussions. Continue our WCW Clash of Champions review series. This is going to be Clash of Champions 23. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Well, let's get into it. This was June 17, 1993. The return of the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, as he's back from the WWE. What was in ring return? His in ring return. In ring return, yeah. Because yeah. he had a. He was back, but he couldn't wrestle because of the, um, I guess, the no-compete clause for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so he would do his flair for the goal, little mm-hmm, bits mm-hmm. here and there, until finally a storyline with the Hollywood Blondes pretty much. The, they, they classified this match as the 80, the best of the 80s against the best yeah. of the 90s. That's not saying much. Well, because it's early. But how about, how about Sid is back, too? Masters of the Powerbomb yeah, so storyline that uh, British Bulldog and Sting have one week to take a flight wherever and retire. Yeah. Of course, we know that's not going to happen. Uh, that is a, They're in an interesting six-man tag team match later on that night. This was also um, first Clash of Champions that Jim Ross is no longer there. He's in the WWF as now it's Tony Schiavone and Jesse the Body Ventura doing the, the, the Clash. Mm-hmm. So here we go. They're at the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, it was a pretty small card. There was only roughly five matches for this one, so they, yeah. they kept it an basic. Hour and a half. It was like an hour and a half. Thank God. Two title matches on this night. So here we let's let's go ahead and kick it off. The opening matchup was supposed to be Ron Simmons versus Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Mm-hmm. However, Orndorff with the injury uh, did not. Um, compete in this uh, match. Instead, it was uh, he was replaced by Dirty Dick Slater. And at this point, I think it's a kind of a slap in the face to Ron Simmons where they've knocked him down all the way to the television yeah. title. Very I much. mean, not even, not even the U.S. title, but the, the television championship. And he's not even in the main event picture anymore, which I think is wrong. I, I just, once he lost the title, it's just the, his relevancy just got abolished. And that was it. He was just... Just another name on the card, unfortunately, and it's a shame because he he drew. The fans were still, you know, were were excited to see him. He he was he was still amazing. I just you, you're you're one and done, my man. That's it. And then you're at the bottom of the the card picking up the scraps. Especially, you know, you 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 were just world heavyweight champion, and now you're opening up the the card. It did, you know. In any event, uh, Orndorff. Uh, escorted their Dirty Dick Slater to ringside as uh, sooner or later Orndorff uh, would have to get into the ring with Ron Simmons. Uh, the match itself was all right. Um, it would have been more interesting if Orndorff was in there. Dirty Dick Slater just, you know, the match just came off a little stale to me. Fans were in it anytime Ron Simmons did something. Um, during the match, Simmons got in his three-point stance. Ortendorf got involved, grabbed uh, Simmons' leg um, to try to keep him, you know, get him off his game. Uh, Orndorf on the apron as well, arguing that Slater should have won, that there should have been a three count. Uh, that gave Simmons a chance to regroup, and eventually he hit a power slam on Dirty Dick Slater and gets the victory. So Ron Simmons gets the victory over Dirty Dick Slater in a short four-minute match, too. That was the other thing that I didn't like. It was just a quick one and done. Following that, Eric Bischoff uh, interviewed Michael Buffer. He would be uh, the special Mm -hmm. uh, ring announcer for the two championship matches on this evening. And pretty much he would be a steady going forward after this. I thought it was pretty cool, uh, WCW bringing him in Mm -hmm. to do the main event. uh, He was the boxing guy. Brought him in. When you hear hear him talk regular, you're like, oh, don't do that. Because it just sounds weird because you're used to hearing him in the, the... the, the way he normally is, mm-hmm. presents himself and whatnot. But I thought it was a good move on Bob yeah. Bischoff's part to bring him in uh, to do that. Gave a little extra to the match. Next on the card was Marcus Alexander Bagwell versus uh, Lord Steven Regal. Um, rookie of the year versus the up-and-coming Regal. This matchup itself was, was pretty good. I enjoyed it because I'm a fan of Regal. I know you are too. Um it gave uh, Bagwell a some competition of a, of a mat wrestler that, that Regal is, and of course the dirty player that Regal is as well. Bagwell rolled Regal up uh, and thought he had it, although Regal was able to counter it 
roll him up, grab the tights, and Regal got the victory over Marcus Bagwell. Mm-hmm. So Regal's yeah, well on his way for many, many victories with that. Yeah, I love how they when you know they mention, oh yeah, Bagwell's the rookie of the year, and he loses. So following that, uh, Eric Bischoff interviewed Max Payne. Now, supposedly, Max Payne and Johnny B. Bad were supposed to have a match on this evening. Um this all stemmed because Max Payne stole Bad's yeah. blaster. The blaster yeah. Oh my god. This this is some cheesy stuff here. He calls uh Johnny B. Bad out to make amends. John, Johnny B. Bad comes out, he says he's gonna give him the blaster, shoots it in his face. And bad goes down. So now they they can't have the match. Uh, Max this, Payne is awarded the match by four figure. All right, this this leads into their feud. This this was a, a no yeah. pun intended. This was a bad feud. So you know Max Payne gets the win by forfeit. Z Man came down. When the Z Man came out there. Yeah. If anything, you could have had an easy you know, a substitute. Right, why didn't he Z-Man just take his place? Him. Exactly. He was already whooping his ass all over around the ring. I don't know. But in any event, it didn't happen. So Payne actually applied the painkiller on Z-Man, and that's when the officials had to come out. So I actually would have enjoyed seeing that match, but I remember this feud. I I just thought it, it didn't benefit either one whatsoever. So next match on the card was the first of two title matches. It was for the NWA world title. Barry Windham... Uh, who just beat Ma- who beat Masahiro Chono for the title, not Ravishing the, the, the NWA champion, like in the middle of the card. Yeah, exactly. Not, not even the main. Well, the main event. I can understand why it's Rick. You know, it's Ric Flair. So I can understand that. Yeah. And this title yeah, yeah. technically is like the is second beneath the WCW title. So you know, I could see that you as know. well. Notice it's not being called the International just yet. No, not yet. So Barry I think Wynn it was actually Rick higher. The world champion. I think it was actually higher at this point. I think the NWA title was actually higher. Higher than the WCW? I think it was more recognized, yeah. Because it had been around for so many years. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know? Well, Barry Windham is going to defend it against Two Cold Scorpio, yeah. who has proven, uh, proven himself, has a hell of a track record, and just know, came off the uh, yeah, Korean tour. Yeah, but I don't know how he gets a title shot, man. It was a fun match, though, and he held his own, but I don't know how he gets a title shot. Well, it's a clash to the champions, so it doesn't really matter. It's not a pay per view. Yeah, but still, I mean, in my opinion, I think they wanted to see what if the kid could handle himself in the main event title match, and he did well. I thought he did well. Oh, he did better than well, man. There was several times where he had a couple of close counts that you thought he was going to get it. The crowd was on the edge of their seat. He pulled out all the stops. I he really impressed me on this night, Mm -hmm. and I thought he should be in the title picture going forward but never was in wcw unfortunately um the one mistake he made was he went for a slingshot over the top rope from the apron Wyndham caught him with that roundhouse right and then he followed it up with a dvt and barry Wyndham gets the victory and retains the title and the shame now, of this, it is the shame of it is that two cold scorpio puts on a performance like this right and he held his own he did and he did well i thought he he, uh, he handled himself really well it was actually it was actually impressive even though i i you know, initially said, I don't even know why he's getting a title shot, but I'm just saying I didn't get it. But at the same time, he, he performed. This doesn't take him anywhere. It's not like, no. you know, so it's just WCW. Ladies I mean, and gentlemen. It, it, also a title shot with it, with being there pretty much just seven months at this point. Yeah. But was I'm also just saying, pretty impressive. But again, no, like is. you said, didn't take him anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Tag team division. That's about it. I, I've said this. I said this two clashes ago. He was underutilized in both WCW and yeah. WWE. He he excelled in ECW, yeah. but neither one of the other major organizations would give him his just uh, his due. I mean, I and, and to make matters about. worse, and I've said this, WWE made it even worse by changing his yeah, name. Yeah. Yeah, and by the time they changed it back, it was pointless. So. Uh, following that, uh, Eric Bischoff interviewed Dustin Rhodes, Sting, and the British Bulldog on their upcoming six-man uh, uh, tag team match coming up, which is the uh, next. It was those that's three cool guys team, versus. That's a, that's a that's a cool squad, man. But I, I forgot to mention Bulldog's here now. Forgot to mention that, you know, Bulldog. So you got Bulldog hey. Flair because I mean I don't know I don't know how many months passed between uh, the last clash and this one. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know. Uh, five. Okay, so but a lot to happen. Oh yeah. 
Well, Vicious happened. has come back. Yeah, yeah. Bulldog signed. Yep. Flair's returned mm-hmm. to the ring. Yeah. Um, officially, some heavy hitters. You, know, you got some heavy hitters there. Yes. So, yeah. So, you got those three guys going up against the WCW champion, Vader, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude, and Sid Vicious. Yeah, what, a, the what a the squad, Powerbomb. man. Masters of the Power Bomb and Hall of Famers. Yes. Well, six oh, yeah. all around. It's six Hall of Famers between oh, uh, yeah. you know the uh, two teams. Well, that's a that's a pretty badass team, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, you know, Rude's walking around with the Halliburton briefcase. Yeah, because he had the US title, the US in, title there. in there. Because right now the US title is vacant because him and Dustin were going at it, and they had that uh that double pin. I think it was a double pin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so th- the title right now is technically vacant until they can fight again and determine who's the uh. Yeah, Beach Blast on July 18th. Yeah. Uh, they did it. They tried to mimic the year before with him and Steamboat in the Iron Man match. So they tried it again with uh, Rose, and that didn't work because the title was still vacant after oh. that night. This went on for a while. Yeah, unfortunately. But yeah, th- this this six uh, this uh, six man group here. Um, I, I I thought they you know remember at Beach Blast because remember you know that you know it was Vader Sid you know they brought in Harlem Heat and. Um, you know, that's what that was the introdu- you know, introduction of the Shockmaster and stuff. I honestly think if you uh, they should have ran with this six, six men of Beach Blast, it would have been pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, this match did not disappoint. Um, early on, you know, they you know Vader's team had a little falling out. You know, he accidentally splashes uh, Rick Rude, uh, unfortunately, but it didn't. You know, nothing came of it. Uh, these guys went to hell and back, all six men. At one time, they even all of them got in the ring together. The referee couldn't mm-hmm. control, uh, contain it anymore. And unfortunately, while the referee was distracted with um, Bulldog and Vicious trying to get them out of the ring, Harley Race gave uh, Vader the briefcase, who and then he hits um, Dustin Rose with it, excuse me, and then Ravishing Rick Rude gets the pin on him. Damn it. So, mm-hmm. Vader, so Vader, Vicious, and Rude get the victory here. Then Vader, then Vader power bombs a uh, bulldog. Bulldog, yep, yeah. which and was Sting, pretty impressive. Sting, Sting saved the day though. Yeah, Sting grabbed the briefcase and, and whatnot, Swing. and then for whatever reason they scatter like cockroaches. Yeah, but he gives it back to the, he gives it to the referee who gives it back to Harley Race. She held on to it. Exactly. Well, Bull, Bulldog is going to get his revenge because of the next clash he will face Vader for the WCW yeah. title. And during this match, of course, they they talked about where is Cactus Jack. This is where they did yeah. that. Oh, Lost in Cleveland. Uh, the storyline, yeah. Cleveland. When they finally find him, he's yeah, like, that's funny. That guy sounds like a troubled soul. I'm people, not this man you're looking for. Some people don't like it, but I did. I thought it was funny. I like that storyline. I thought it was very well yeah. done, especially when they found him and they're talking to him. I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, uh, <laughs> okay. And that that whole build up to Vader and Cactus Jack was done. Yeah, really it was good well. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, one of the rare times they got a storyline right. So now that takes us down to our main event. It's for the unified tag team titles. It's a two out of three falls match that Ric Flair had requested to do this old school style. The Hollywood Blondes putting the this titles is, on the line against Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. You know what this is like? Saturday night's main event. Mm-hmm. The old two, two, out out of, three two, two out of three falls. And we'll get into the match and I'll, I'll, I'll say what I want to say. What, the fact that the, we got some horsemen here? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just uh, the title. You know, a fall will only oh, the fall can't count towards the belt if there's a. That, I always thought let's that was this, that yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah, let's, just, let's just get into the match. Yeah, let's get into the match. Uh, it started off with Arn Anderson. I, you you had about ten thousand crowd people going nuts, demanding we want Flair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the ring, they and were when over. He finally man. got in there, man. There was over the, the horsemen, you know, like yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. They're in horseman it's country. It's crazy. Yeah, Flair, yeah. They're 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 baby faces right mm-hmm. now. Right now, I mean, th- this match gave you everything that was just just great. I mean, the Hollywood Blondes were making fun of Flair and Anderson, saying they're old. There has been. They things. were good, man. They were young, man. These guys were young and up and coming, and I like the storyline because you know they're talking about um how. You know, the experience goes, obviously, to Flair and Arn, but mm-hmm. the youth and the, you know, the energy and everything goes to uh, to, to Austin and, um, and Pillman. Pillman, Pillman so. and, and like Ventura said, the longer the match goes, it's got to benefit yeah, yeah. Austin and Pillman more. The younger guys, yeah. I liked Austin when he was, like, doing the pop belly thing to, uh, to um, 
to uh, Anderson. Anderson, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Was good stuff. stuff. I love the Hollywood blinds. Yeah, blinds. no, they were great, man. They were great. They, they keep... did not keep them around yeah, long yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. within the next two clashes, not the next one, but the one after that, they're going to face each other. So it's going to be over. It's like almost a one and done. Grand opening, grand closing. Yeah. Exactly. Now, the first fall, Flair with a forearm to, to Brian Pillman, he got the, uh, the pin mm. as Arn Anderson pulled Austin out of the ring. Flair was able to get the upper hand there, and quickly Arn Anderson and Ric Flair get the first fall. Now, once they got to the second fall, and again, this makes no sense. Once they got the first it, fall, I knew they weren't going to get the belts. I, I thought had, maybe it was going to go the full I had, three. I, I had that feeling. I had that feeling. Yeah. I did not see this going a two and two oh, right. and done. I really didn't. And the second fall, as Flair was going for the figure four on Austin, Barry Windham came down and attacked Flair. So the Hollywood Blondes get disqualified. Flair and Anderson get the second fall, but because it's on a disqualification, they don't get the yeah. tag team titles. And, and this is what I was going to mention earlier. What's funny is that Jesse Ventura again is is the one who's announcing it. He's saying how the title can't change hands on the DQ, and he's the one that said it years ago on Saturday Night's main event when the Bulldogs. Everyone thought they won the title. But that but the fall can't count in these matches of you cannot uh win the title on a on a on a DQ and Vince was like oh yeah that's right so it's just it was just funny just you know because we got how many times we saw that yeah yeah so. that was ridiculous and then of course they uh they win the match but Wyndham is, is still attacking them out of the crowd comes the newest horseman yeah Paul, Paul Roma. Roma was like a horseman with a couple cup of coffee yeah seriously the forgotten he horseman. comes out of the yeah, he comes out of the crowd, attacks Austin, but, and tries to close the ring. Okay, but did you notice they Flair's getting a beaten and they they don't even help him like initially, like no, they almost first. they almost forget about him and then eventually they they set their sights on. Um... Oh, by the way, we got to help the man. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the best was afterwards when Tony Schiavone was interviewing Barry Windham and how he's saying he's no longer a uh, horseman; he's right, on right, his right. own. Right, right. He's the lone and, wolf. He's the lone wolf. That's what they were saying. Wolf, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ric Flair just comes out of nowhere and beats the crap out of him. Yeah, yeah, and that's setting up, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's setting up uh, a, a very interesting match between the two that's going to happen down the line um, for that title. But, I mean, overall, as far as this clash goes, I think the last two matches were really, really exciting yeah. for the – actually, the last three, I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, no, it was a fun this, – this was good because it's only an hour and a half. It so was, this, like, was, this was short. They didn't yeah. have a bunch of matches where right, they just – it was... Three minute matches. It was it, it was it, a, it was entertaining. A, a decent entertaining. amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for, you know Ron Simmons being in the opening yeah, bout I, going for yeah. the TV title. I agree. But other than that, it was it was a pretty good clash. All right. Well, that's a review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.